Just by getting dressed this morning, all of us damaged the planet. The environment... <laughs> It gets worse. <laughs> the environmental impact it took to make all of the clothes being worn by all of us in this auditorium is the carbon equivalent of 185,000 pounds of coal. Our clothes use over 19 million gallons of water and 93,000 pounds of toxic chemicals. It took so much to make something that is literally just taking a pit stop off on our bodies. And it will take even more of the earth before we're done with it. 99% of the clothes in this room will end up in landfill at some point. It's about 5,000 pounds. We in America send 10.5 million tons of textile waste to landfill every year. This incredible planet that has provided us all the resources we need to make these clothes is the same one we've turned our back on. It's given us what we need to live, and we are taking away what it needs to survive. All of us, every day, just by living, damage the planet and others on it. And because of this, our planet is sick. Now, when we see a friend or a child or a pet that is sick, we rush and say, how can I help you? What can I do to make you better? This is our time to ask these same questions for our planet. What can I do to make you better? We can heal our planet by changing one thing. The thing we did wrong in 1760. We can reunite our behavior as humans who caused this illness through a tool we use every day, business. I'm a capitalist, not something my tree-hugging environmentalist parents are too proud of. <laughs> but I believe we can use the power of business to heal this planet. I also believe in a world where people, plants, and animals all have access to a life well-lived. I believe that in my core. I may have been born that way. I did grow up in northern British Columbia, <laughs> where the outdoors was my background and my dog was my babysitter. <laughs> I also grew up on the unceded territory of the Wet'suwet'en people, where they taught me the interconnected relationship between people and the land was fluid and filled with honor. I did get I dedicated my professional life to bringing those principles to business, and a particular sector of business, one that stands as the icon of everything opposite to those principles, the apparel and textile industry. Now, let me take you back to 1760. 230 years ago was the start of the Industrial Revolution, and textiles were the dominant industry of that revolution. Before then, humans worked within the constraints of nature. We managed resources like trees and crops, fish, in a way where they were replenished faster than we used them. In 1760, that all changed. The Industrial Revolution forever altered our relationship to nature because we discovered what happens when you apply speed and scale to using the earth. It's that speed and that scale that birthed business as it is today. We use speed and scale to take raw materials from the earth and make things out of them, like clothing. We sell them, we use them, and then we throw them away, all in a linear line. And it worked really well. We made some of the most amazing innovations like sanitation and mobility and healthcare. And we took it to an extreme, also creating incredible damage. Because in linear thinking, we pretend that there are endless resources when in fact we live on a finite planet. In linear thinking, we pretend we can just throw stuff away when, in fact, there is 
no away. This is where we disconnected, where we perfected a system of how we do things was at odds with the natural system that allowed us to do it in the first place. We thought we were really successful too because we measured success by one metric alone, profits. In the rush to linear profits, businesses make trade-offs where employees, suppliers, and the planet are exploited. Now, measuring financial success isn't the problem. It's if that we only look at one vital sign, and it doesn't tell us the whole story of a system's health. Profits over people, profits over the planet, has a real impact, and not just to our economy, but to our lives. Nature is taking its power back through floods, rising sea levels, wildfires, just to name a few. It's linear businesses that are not just creating an environment, aren't just creating an environmental burden, but something we pay for every day. Rising commodity prices make things more expensive for us. The real cost of climate change is going to reduce our GDP by 10% by 2030. And it's all of our tax dollars that pay for the waste that is managed by a linear business. This is what happens when we use a mindset that's 230 years old, where the only way for a linear business to grow more revenue is to make more stuff. That is unsustainable. But one day, Wikipedia will mark 2019 as the year that a revolution occurred. <laughs> the year that business became circular. If linear is what made us sick, circular will heal us. The beauty and proficiency of circular is all around us all the time, in microseconds, in months, and years. Circular is the exchange of oxygen to carbon dioxide in our lungs. It's the change of water from evaporation to condensation. It's the change of seasons. What if business acted more like nature, where we measured the long-term health of the whole system by measuring all of the parts, not just one thing? where we took an ecosystem approach to how we build and manage businesses of the future. A circular business is one that takes into consideration from inception, where did this come from and where will it go? In a circular business, there is no waste. There is only a positive impact on the planet and the people who make products. A circular business moves materials through a system at its highest value. In a circular business, we revolutionize the idea of waste, use, and value. In nature, there is no waste. Think about it. In October, the leaves from, fall from the trees. We don't say it's litter. <laughs> Those leaves serve a new role, providing nutrients to the soil. We, in circular business, we start to design with zero waste in mind. We think about how do we move materials through their next use. The book Cradle to Cradle identifies materials as operating in one of two systems, biological and technical. Biological materials are non-toxic and can easily be reabsorbed into the earth. Technical materials like plastics, polyester, nylon, spandex, are kept in continuous circulation in a closed loop system. The other emphasis in circular is on use. You might be already participating in some of these sharing business models today. Airbnb turned your home from um, your empty home into a business by allowing someone else to use it. Or a car sharing app gives you access to a car without having to buy one or even have a car get created. Another example is extending the life of a product through renewal. An existing product is cleaned, repaired, inspected, and put back out into the market for another sale. 
The longer we use something, the less we need to create a new one. It allows us to responsibly manage resources from the earth and create new innovative businesses. In Circular, we create a new formula for success. We take raw materials from a responsible source. We make things from them, like clothing. We sell, rent, and share these products, and then we use them over and over again. They move through various businesses and forms, creating value all along the way that's fluid and filled with honor. In a circular world, we get dressed in the morning and we restore the planet. We save the carbon equivalent of 185,000 pounds of coal. We use that 19 million gallons of water to drink instead. And we reduce the need for 93,000 pounds of toxic chemicals from ever being created in the first place. In a circular world, we take what we need and we make it regenerative. An apparel brand makes a cotton polyester, polyester sweater. The cotton is fair trade and organic. The polyester came from a recycled source. The labor and the design is valued through its creation, and you buy it, and you love it, and you wear it all the time. And uh, at some point, you might get bored with it, or it doesn't fit anymore. But because that sweater was designed inside of a circular business, you know that you can give it back to the brand for its next use. The sweater also brings its story with it. There's data embedded in it, telling the brand what it's made of, or what its name is, or what it's sold for, or how to repair it. The brand repairs, renews, and resells that sweater. And maybe to the, by, by the person sitting right behind you, this happens over and over and over again, generating financial value for the company and environmental value by reducing the need for new sweaters to be made. Over time, the sweater has a great life. Maybe five of you in this room have owned this sweater. But it begins to deteriorate, and it's time to go to its next use. The brand then extracts the materials from the sweater, creating new fibers, which are respun into new yarns and knit into a new sweater. The cycle goes on and the system feeds itself, creating value all along the way. And 0% of the clothes in this room end up in landfill. Today, all of you are forced into a system where you as a consumer are stuck buying things that are disposable and create waste and you're forced to subsidize that system to manage all of the waste that linear businesses create. Today, that changes. All of us have the power to change the system. You can commit to never throwing clothing away again. You can reach out to your favorite brand and tell them to take full responsibility of everything they make for its entire lifetime. And you can support circular business models like sharing and renewal today. There is a path forward to healing this planet, and all of us are the medicine. Your voice, your dollars matter. The linear business cannot survive if there are no customers for it. Yeah. <laughs> We are all part of the system. Our choices made it possible. Our choices can make it change. Rumi says, why do you stay in prison when the door is wide open? I would add that wide open door is circular. Thank you. Thank you.